it's you. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Peter Alsop. Well, you already knew that. For this week's song, To Chew, we have one that I wrote back in 1989 for a rally I did with my friend John Ritter down on the Santa Monica Beach here in California. We were raising money for the local Heal the Bay organization to help them clean up the pollution flowing into the Pacific Ocean from the Los Angeles Basin. I sing it along with my daughter Megan. She was 12 then. And we put it on my Plug and Away album. So, right now, let's listen to Heal the Bay. Sun was slowly burning through, the morning mist was rising in the air. Seabirds soared in tight formation, seagulls swooping, diving everywhere. My young daughter close beside me, crammed with all our beach stuff in the car. Laughing, headed for the bay. Flowing full of life the way kids are We piled out and picked our way Through broken glass and beer cans in the sand My little one she found a dried out Seagull carcass tangled in a web of plastic strands The sign tacked up said danger Toxic chemicals contaminate the bay Rolled down her cheek, she said I don't want the world to be this way Heal the bay Heal the bay Heal the bay Heal the bay As well go home, I said There's nothing we can do The whole world's full of poison And everybody dies sometime, it's true She dropped down on her knees And with angry eyes she told me I'm not dead She looked down at the seagull Tangled up together Is what she said I said the bay is sick, you know It's just too much for kids to understand I watched her take her little fists And tightly clench them down into the sand I shrugged them, just one person I can't heal an ocean full of poison things Said, Daddy, it's our bay. Then she closed her eyes and she began to sing. Heal the bay. Heal the bay. Then something wonderful began. Heal the bay. Children, children came from all around. Heal the bay. Silo played bass for us, and Roger LaRoque programmed the Lindrum F-16 and added other percussion, 
Adam Levine played acoustic and electric guitars with me, and it was engineered by Jana and the wonderful Miriam Cutler, who also co-produced it, and she sang background vocals with Shelby Flint. And there's a whole slew of Topanga kids who sang with us on the choruses. This song's really a plea to help save this planet of ours. If we really want to have a clean, unpolluted environment, we must first be able to imagine one. When we throw something away, it doesn't really go away. It just goes somewhere else. And we've been warned that in 100 years, if we keep polluting at the same rate, half of all our species of plants and animals will be extinct. Environmental pollution causes sickness and death for all living plants and animals. I wrote this song 32 years ago, and still the toxicities on our earth increase every year. Some of us humans are just now beginning to realize that when a species of plant or animal is extinct, it's gone forever. Humans can and will become extinct too if we don't take better care of our biosphere. It's up to all of us, adults and children, to care for our planet so that humankind can continue, hopefully functioning as stewards of the precious life forms we already have here, rather than thinking of them as infinite resources to be used by us humans, specifically for our own survival. Most of the litter along our highways, parks, and city streets consists of food packaging byproducts. The fertilizers and petrochemicals we use to grow our food, power our machines, kill our weeds, runs off our lawns and parking lots and down our storm drains into our waterways. The corporations and municipalities and countries that are major polluters are run by real people, people who work to maximize profits and cut costs at the expense of of the rest of us people and species most affected by their behaviors. During the last 30 to 40 years, there's been a steady erosion of regulations and oversight formerly provided by government and other watchdog organizations. So the problems of toxicity and pollution continue to grow. To an alien from another planet, us consumers probably appear unable to feel compassion. It seems like we're not concerned about the health of life here on our Earth But many of us who still unwillingly add to the pollution streams feel stuck in our staunch and monolithic economic system of capitalism. We've been trained to believe that making money is the only way out, the only way to save our individual selves and families. Many of us feel angry and frustrated about having to live in a world where polluting and wastefulness is a way of life. Many of us work to conserve and recycle, to raise awareness and find more responsible ways to preserve our non-renewable resources. We work to encourage, support, and develop more renewable ways to survive so all of us can breathe clean air, drink fresh water, and feel safe where we live and work and play. And there's still so much more to do. We have to fix and restructure our economic systems. Those of us who are parents know we don't have all the answers, but it's important to our kids to know that they can talk to us about things that frighten them. Our children often remind us about what the most important things in life really are. And it's not just the stuff we buy, it's how we care about each other. It's a huge task to clean up the planet. And at the same time, we need to teach others how and why that's so important for our community survival. It requires many of us pulling together in the same direction. I put together some exercises and questions as examples for adults who might want to engage kids in thinking about ways to decrease our spread of pollution and toxicity. Here's some exercises. Together, go to your local beach and mark off an area in the sand. Then sift through the sand in that area and pick out all the little bits and pieces of human-made objects you can find. We already know that when we throw something away, it doesn't really go away. So find out where it does go when we throw it away and, and how long it takes for things to decompose. Visit your local landfill and ask the people who work there to explain how it works. Here's some questions. What is our environment? Have you ever breathed smog or seen polluted water? Where? How did you feel about it? Have you ever polluted anything? What? Do you know what toxic means? What can you do personally to help clean up the earth? And how do you feel about having to clean up someone else's mess? (laughs) So we'll continue to work to figure out more cooperative, less competitive ways to live together. We grow and learn and agree to disagree sometimes, so we can move ahead in our efforts to live more sustainably and kindly with each other. It's a work in progress, and we each have our own tasks to accomplish in this effort. You can write me at peter at peteralsop.com anytime. I'll be back next week with another Song to Chew. Bye for now.